Okay, today is uh, Sunday, January 7th, 2024. All I really got done today, uh, it took a long time to, to wrap that entire uh, uh, vertical stabilizer and uh, rudder mechanism. Uh, uh, so the painting job that I spent two weeks doing uh, wouldn't get uh, wrecked by all the overspray. So uh, the paint that I use comes out pretty fast and I think it's a little thinner than uh, what I usually use for some of the uh, parts that I paint black. So uh, uh, the nice thing about that, uh, like I'm not real concerned about whether it's you know perfect and there's no drip marks or anything, but the nice part about uh, that paint is that it, uh, it basically flows and anything uh, left over is just gonna drip down there and it's actually gonna flow and flatten pretty well. Uh, I've done that a couple times with this paint. So far, I'm happy with the results. Uh, it uh, uh, it doesn't leave like big globs or drip marks or anything. So uh, I just blasted this uh, entire uh, uh, center part. Uh, the other side is masked off uh, because that's basically a hinge, and it's going to uh, uh, it's going to leak through. So uh, the other side is masked off as well. Uh, and I just kind of power blasted this. So uh, once this is dry, I'm probably going to give it one more blast just down the uh, the hinge where you can see uh, some of the uh, the blue is still showing through. Not a big deal. Uh, if I come back to it and I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you don't need to do. Uh, it doesn't. It's never going to show anyway. Uh, and that could very well be. Uh, I, I just need to look at the, the, the swing of this and, and see where it's going to be. And if it's never going to show, then I'm not going to bother. But uh, this probably needs two coats anyway. So uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, the other thing I got done was uh, putting this countersink on the uh, bar. So I can't put... Uh, I can't put this on... Uh, on here yet uh, because everything is wet it's pretty easy to put on just drill a hole put a bolt through it <laughs> and you're done uh, so uh, this will go on top of here and it just barely fits with the bolt but it does fit so I got some uh, pipe stands to hold each end of that while I'm putting uh, all of these on and they sit high enough that those will swing free uh, and it'll make clamping the skin so much easier so I'm going to wait until those get here before doing that, which frees up a little time to finish that and clear off this table from all the, the painting junk. Uh, and this will just be a giant clean work area for getting the whatever I need ready for the, uh, the wings. Okay, today is Thursday, January 11th. So uh, these pipe stands arrived so I can get started on. The uh, ribs that go on here are very, very tight. Uh, rounded the edge a little of this a little bit and, and can, can get it on. It's really stiff, but I can get them on and imagine the others are gonna be uh, pretty similar. So I think what I'm gonna do is just uh, uh, put them on all on, get them all uh, glued down and then uh, uh, shoot it or brush on some uh, uh, epoxy primer uh, and probably do it pretty thin so uh, this is uh, completely done it worked out pretty well uh, there's one spot there that looks a lot worse than it is uh, that should be pretty easy to uh, uh, to very lightly sand so uh, that's one small uh, leak and I think there's one on the uh, the other side this isn't a big deal uh, it's 10, 15 minutes and I can I can fix that and uh, you'll never see it. So uh, this guy here is just sitting on here. So all the uh, the paint is dry uh, on everything. Uh, so the, uh, that I'm going to secure the same way that I did the uh, leading edge extensions. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting that put uh, secured on and making sure that it uh, you know swivels free and everything. Uh, and it's uh, done. On the other side of this, uh, I'm going to need to just go down with a uh, a brush in every color, uh, and uh, except for the top one, because uh, it's already black, uh, and just uh, repaint those, because uh, uh, th it's just impossible to keep the paint from leaking through. It's not the end of the world if I just left it the way it is, but uh, 
you know, in bright sunlight, you'd see that gunk in there and it would look ugly. So uh, I'm going to touch that up uh, so uh, everything kind of matches. I haven't touched this at all yet. Uh, so that is basically the same as it was when I left it. Uh, I am going to get to that as soon as I uh, can. Uh, as soon as uh, that over there uh, is done and uh, I have the... Uh, ribs on that uh, uh, basically curing. Uh, I can get back to this. I just need to uh, uh, to shave the angle on uh, at the very end of those about an eighth of an inch. Uh, I suspected they were slightly off and they are. Uh, it's totally fixable. Uh, it's just a matter of changing uh, the angle at the very ends. The, at, at the very like base of it there, it, it clears easy. Uh, it's just, you know, because of the angle, it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So, uh, or not steeper, but it gets closer and closer uh, to the, to the frame because the angle is like, you know, a, a, you know, a quarter of a degree off or something. And it's just enough that it, it's not going to, like it swings free, but once I have the, the, uh, the skin on there, I know it's not going to, uh, I know it's not going to swing free. So I just need to, uh, to adjust that ever so slightly. And the other one is. Uh, exactly the same uh, it's off by the exact same amount so in that way <laughs> I guess they're symmetrical they're exactly the same so they both need uh, uh, a slight shaving on the uh, on the inside uh, just to uh, to make the angle run exactly parallel with the, the fuselage and leave enough room for the uh, the skin here I haven't done much other than sanding smooth uh, you can see those little uh, uh, spots of uh, epoxy on the edge when I was using the, the die grinder, it, it slipped a couple times and it nicked the, the metal. It's not a huge deal, it's just ugly. Uh, so I just put some epoxy. It's still not sanded perfectly smooth, but once it's uh, once I can get in there and really get it sanded nice and smooth, I'll, I'll reprime it just so it uh, I don't have those little nicks in the, in the metal. Uh, and uh, the epoxy that I put on the top filled out uh, great. There's just nothing wrong with it. Uh, the, the tape held it perfectly flat. I didn't even have to sand it. I did sand it a little bit, but on the other side, there's a significant amount of uh, sanding that needs to be done. It doesn't really matter uh, because it's above the the flap handle. All I really need, all I really need to shave off is just this little bit here. So this here uh, uh, goes up in there, and I have the other one off. So this one, <laughs> for some reason. I didn't notice that I hadn't painted uh, that side, so uh, uh, I gave it a, a, a shot of paint, uh, and it'll be dry by tomorrow. Uh, the uh, the other thing I had to do was enlarge those holes uh, about uh, 32nd of an inch uh, or 64th. Uh, I can't remember offhand for them to uh, to fit in uh, in where that post goes. So uh, uh, the action of the handle is basically, uh, you know, you pull it out, put it, pull it down, and then put it in the next hole. Uh, I think, uh, and there's a spring up there too, so there's, you're not just kind of futzing around with it, it'll, you know, slide down into the right hole. But uh, uh, I think what I might do eventually is put some photo sensors on there uh, and run the, the signal uh, back over to the, uh, either the panel or the uh, the electronic uh, touch screens that I'm putting on the uh, uh, the grips of the uh, the the uh, control sticks, and uh, stay tuned for that. I'm probably going to make a, a video of what I'm doing, and it's very like prototypical. Uh, it's probably not going to be the final thing. I'm just you know using a 3D printer to uh, uh, to uh, build out the case, and then I'll bring it out here uh, and uh, and slip it on uh, on there to. Uh, uh, to see how uh, you know how well it's going to work and uh, and everything, and if it's the right angle, I might have to adjust it and and print out a new one. But it, it's going to be pretty cool. So anyway, the uh, really all you need to do is put some photo sensors on the uh, uh, other side of the holes there, and then just run them uh, uh, run them down into uh, uh, the uh, either the panel or the the custom boxes that I'm building for the sticks. It'll be cool to be able to see the uh, uh, the actual flat position without having to kind of look back and make sure that it's in in the right position. I'm sure eventually I'm not going to care because I'll get so used to it that I'll just know where the holes are. Uh, but uh, it's still kind of cool. 
you know, there, there is a little bit of play and uh, uh, most of the play is like forward. <laughs> and, and these do, will need a, a, a slight spacer uh, to uh, match up with this. So this is as far into uh, the rod for the, the flaps. Uh, so this coming up here uh, with them right flush up against this is just slightly off, so it needs to uh, to have a pad. The the curve where they fall into the holes is actually very, very close, if not perfect. It looks like this little snafu with these being slightly too, uh, uh, too close together isn't gonna be a huge deal. Okay, today is Friday, January 12th, so this is basically most of what I worked on today, so couple things left to do so these spacers are just about right uh, they might be a little bit too thick uh, so so if you look there uh, the tension on these is too much uh, so I so I shortened the uh, leaves on the end of those and uh, drilled out one of the rivet holes it just happened to match uh, perfectly with uh, where that top hole is for the uh, uh, for the flap handle uh, uh, guard. Uh, if you look at uh, this, you can see it's just pulled in slightly. Uh, so I guess the the next project is just to uh, to put a spacer on there uh, or uh, or there, but uh, I'm going to try there first. So uh, other than that uh, being off a little bit, it's uh, uh, it's done and I can start getting onto the wings. Yesterday, I I don't think I mentioned, I uh, I polished this a fair bit. Well, not polished it, but uh, uh, sanded it down. Uh, not really sanded it down, but took the, uh, the bristle pad to it pretty aggressively. Uh, there was a couple spots. There was one spot around here where the sticker was and uh, whatever adhesive they use for that, uh, you know, it's better than super glue. That sticker is so hard to get off. But anyway, uh, this is mostly ready to go. So what okay, I today is uh, Saturday, January 13th. So I pretty much spent several hours tweaking this, making uh, sure that everything is going to line up. So everything is aligned and, and perfectly uh secured now but uh, including the other side i still haven't done anything on the wings uh it's it's just getting this done so um on this side that shadow kind of interferes with being able to see it on uh, this side i created a, a plate uh, to go over the back to uh, uh to only expose the amount of uh the uh, uh the amount of this that needs to be, and that was a mistake. Uh, always wear gloves when using a, uh, a die grinder. It slipped, and, and luckily it just caught a little bit of my fingernail, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's kind of uh, sensitive, so uh, I'm wearing a finger protector. So uh, this part is, is all done. It works fine. Uh, it uh, uh, This here, this here uh, clears that, uh, that notch. Like I mentioned before, uh, you can see that uh, this is supposed to have uh, a single uh, bolt drilled into it. So, uh, the, and of course, the reasoning for that is this ha this has to swivel a little bit. So when you uh, uh, when you put it in, uh, when you uh, adjust the flaps, you you know pull it to the side, and then put it in the next uh, notch. Everything except for the spring uh, and drilling the hole is done for that. And I just need to adjust the holes on the side of that to uh, to match the uh, the little uh, nipple that sticks out of the uh, the flap handle. So uh, hopefully I'll get to that as I'm working on the wings. So uh, while I'm waiting for this to uh, to process, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, this is an application called Scanaverse that uh, uses the uh, uh, the iPads, and I believe it can use it on the the iPhone as well. I don't have an iPhone though. Uh, uh, it will use the iPad's LiDAR to, uh, uh, to make a model of this. Uh, of course, it's not as, uh, uh, as nice as a, a 3D scanner, but uh, I'm hoping that I can get uh, 
uh, a, uh, uh, a reasonable facsimile that I can model shapes around to, uh, to make that fairing to go over that. Uh, the other option uh, I have for that is uh, filling it in with epoxy, but I don't really like that idea. It's kind of sloppy and I'd have to redo a lot of stuff. Uh, whereas uh, uh, 3D printing this onto a uh, carbon fiber reinforced uh, material uh, and then painting it would be, would be much easier and it would also be a proof of concept for doing some of the other fairings. Of course the, the 3D printer can only uh, print, uh, I think it's about like a foot and a half by a foot and a half by a foot and a half. Uh, it's a fairly big printer, but even uh, uh, big printers have their uh, their limitations. So uh, uh, I'm hoping that I can use this to uh, uh, to model uh, a fairing and then print it out uh, and then uh, just rivet it to the uh, the different things like the the wing root and stuff like that. So. Uh, May work, it may not, but uh, uh, I scanned this tonight to uh, to see if I could bring it home and uh, and play with it. So hopefully that works out. Okay, today is Saturday, January twenty seventh, twenty twenty four. Um, so I've been away for about uh, two weeks. Uh, we had a, a cold snap, and it was just so frigid in here. I I just got stuff done at home because it's just. A, Working in here when it's really, really cold isn't fun. Uh, and uh, the week after that, uh, I had a business trip. So today's the first day I've gotten back to this for uh, two weeks. So um, this uh, this part is all done. I elongated some of those holes a little bit to uh, to line up and make sure that there was a little bit of wiggle room uh, for that uh, that pin to fall into place. So that is all done and uh, I got so I asked a question on the forum about the uh, the spring uh, that goes in there because uh, it wasn't immediately apparent uh, and somebody sent me a picture uh, you can see that that handle is actually uh, or the not the handle the uh, that rod is actually in backwards so I'll have to take that out and turn it around because uh, it needs to go and, and the reason I couldn't figure it out is because this is black and I couldn't see it. Uh, so there's a little uh, thing sticking out the same as there is uh, uh, there. So uh, that's obviously on the wrong side. So I just need to uh, uh, take that rod out and turn it around. Uh, and then it'll be on the right side. I just need to drill uh, two small holes in those for the, the spring to go through. And then uh, that part will be done. All of this. Uh, works now it fits nicely in the holes and I'm not worried about it getting janky uh, in flight of course uh, I'll have to test that once you know everything is hooked up to this and it's a little stiffer so I'll, I'll have to test uh, once uh, once everything's put together I'll have to test it again make sure everything uh, fits properly obviously because uh, this does have a little bit of give to it so this is probably the easiest <laughs> thing I've ever done uh, so uh, just putting this uh, swivel on uh, and this goes on to the uh, uh, a metal part that actually slides on to one of the uh, flap ribs so uh, this is the uh, uh, weldment that uh, slides on to uh, the the uh, flap ribs this is incredibly hard to drill through so uh, this needs to be reamed at least mine did oops at least mine did about uh, a 64th of an inch which is a lot to ream <laughs> Uh, the reason it needs reaming is this just does not fit on the uh, inside of that and that's pretty much the case for every uh, circular weldment uh, in the kit they, they all need to be uh, uh, reamed out slightly uh, some more than others this one more than the others <laughs> so this guy is a, um, a 3d print uh, of the, uh, the uh, uh, prototype I've been working on. So the the uh, final won't look like this. It'll probably be a little bit wider, uh, I just, uh, but the screen will be the same size. That's the exact size of the screen I'll be using. Uh, and the ports just come out here for now. Uh, eventually those will be hidden, but uh, for now it makes it easier to work on. So uh, I got the sizing right on that. Uh, it slides on easily, maybe a little too easily. So uh, I can't move the sticks right now because they're uh, they're actually hooked up to uh, that and it doesn't move real well. There's just a couple of screwdrivers stuck in there to uh, uh, to keep it from coming out. 
so uh, that's basically how that will look on the, the stick. And I'm working on software to control the, uh, the radios and a few other things and possibly even have a small moving map on there. Uh, anyway, there's a uh, there's an embedded uh, single board uh, computer uh, that will sit in the bottom there, and that's where its uh, ports come out, so I can use uh, to uh, to control the uh, some of the avionics. So I'm going to make uh, uh, two of these, uh, one for each stick, obviously, and this little part right here will get uh, one of uh, these. So this is going to go this is going to go into uh, into there. Uh, and of course, I need to uh, to drill it out. Uh, I deliberately didn't uh, have it drilled out uh, for the 3D printer uh, because uh, I wasn't exactly sure that the the entire di diameter, and it would have been easier just to to drill it out if it, if it's solid plastic rather than uh, getting it wrong and then and then drilling uh, drilling it out different. And I wasn't sure exactly what type of uh, switches I was going to use either. Uh, so these are just momentary. These are just momentary uh, uh, contacts, which is uh, pretty similar to to what you see on any uh, yoke or stick. Uh, the cool thing about these is they're actually not that you'd ever really see it, but uh, uh, that outer rim uh, between the uh, uh, between the push button and the and the frame is actually uh, backlit to blue. So that's kind of cool. But uh, so this will. You know, sit in in there, and that's going to be the uh, uh, push to talk switch, uh, and uh, this will sit like this. And uh, if you've got largish hands like I do, uh, I should have made that a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, 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 that's how the screen's going to sit while you're while you're flying. And I think that's probably going to work out pretty well. Uh, if not, I'll just get a regular grip and uh, and not do this, but uh, it's a fun project to work on. It's kind of a side project when I, when I can't come out. A uh, couple of mistakes I made. I made the lid too small. <laughs> I don't know how I, I got the measurement wrong, but uh, the, the lid I made. So I made a lid on it so I could put the uh, the embedded board in here and then be able to just take it off with a, uh, with a screw. Uh, uh, like take it out from that side. I can't take it out from that side because the... Uh, uh, there's right now there's going to be ports with the <clears throat> with elbow uh, mating connectors uh, just so I can get at the ports while I'm doing development. Uh, then the the wires will just uh, the wires will just come down that way. Okay, today is Sunday, January twenty eighth, twenty twenty four. So didn't get a ton done. The main thing was uh, reaming out the middle of those. So uh, the the first one I used a drill bit. And that takes for friggin' ever, and it wears out your drill bits because that steel is is really hard. Uh, the uh, uh, the thing that I found that worked really like probably on the order of like three or four times faster is just get a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, it might have been uh, slightly larger than that, but I think it was a quarter inch drill bit that I used, uh, and just wrap uh, a strip of sandpaper around it enough that it's like super tight. And just use the drill to uh, to work it into there, and then just uh, sand it out, pull it out. Of course, you're going to wear out the sandpaper pretty quick, but uh, after uh, uh, three or four, uh, maybe five uh, strips of sandpaper, you've uh, reamed it out and you haven't worn out any bits. So uh, that worked really well. Uh, I can't remember which one of these was the one I did with the sandpaper, but uh, it worked a lot faster than using a uh, uh, just a slightly oversized drill bit like. Uh, the only thing, the only other thing that I had, uh, assuming this was the one, was uh, uh, a drill bit that was one sixty fourth oversized, which was the perfect amount to ream out. But it just, it's so hard. <laughs> if you use the trick with the uh, the sandpaper, it'll go a lot faster. Uh, the sandpaper that I used was uh, sixty grit, so it's really coarse. Uh, over here, uh, I basically got this turned around and the spring put on. There, there was an ear here uh, that just hooks up to that and it works great. So this now has enough uh, tension uh, to pull the, the pin back into the hole. So uh, that part was pretty easy to do. I just had to uh, take this off, turn it around, and uh, drill the two little uh, holes there for the spring, uh, which was very trivial. So 
this is the hardware that hooks up to those uh, those two brackets that are drying those uh, brackets go over uh, over one of these uh, not necessarily that one but one that doesn't have the hole in it uh, the other thing that I'm working on and I believe I videoed that yesterday is the uh, control stick or the stick uh, controller uh, that I'm uh, doing on an embedded system. I'll be making a, uh, a video on that uh, once I get f further along with the, the software. I've just been so busy with work I haven't had a chance to uh, to get to it. Uh, the other thing is uh, you may or may not have noticed uh, some air has developed uh, in these as everything has settled. So uh, uh, it's more visible because th those hoses get dirty and stuff. But uh, uh, it's more visible in the uh, uh, underneath here. There's a, there's a big segment with, that has some air in it. So I'm gonna have to build s or put some little. Uh, I'm gonna have to put some little trays around there again, and, or around uh, those the master cylinders, uh, and uh, uh, pump some more uh, fluid into them very 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 slowly. Uh, until all the uh, the air is gone, uh, I got a much better pump the other day, so uh, that will make that process a lot easier. Okay, today is Friday, February second, twenty twenty four. So uh, been away for another week. Uh, I just been busy with work, and uh, by the time I'm done, it's kind of too late to come out here. So today is Friday, so I. Uh, uh, cared less about how late it was. So anyway, uh, so I got basically this table mostly cleaned off. These are painted for the uh, inboard sides of the uh, flap controls. So uh, I've got these mostly spaced out correctly now. So you can kind of see what that looks like. So uh, uh, the next step uh, the next step is uh, drilling this one and this one together uh, with an AN bolt. I believe it's an AN3. Uh, so uh, I want to get everything, uh, basically just follow, you know, step by step the instructions. Uh, uh, and I'll try to cover most of that as I go. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, for the wings, there's a lot of uh, actual pictures in the uh, in the drawings uh, actual pictures of the assembly that makes it a little easier to uh, to put together so you know of course I got to do the uh, the fuel line through here and the uh, fuel sump which is uh, those guys so yeah uh, all I really got done today was that little bit of painting uh, clearing this off and uh, getting these space these are very very close uh, obviously I'm uh, they still need some tweaking but uh, for now, uh, uh, I can start working on getting everything perfectly uh, spaced and uh, uh, putting everything together. Uh, this is the uh, uh, some of the skins. Uh, I brought them from uh, uh, where they've been sitting over there for months on end. So uh, I wanted to make sure of the uh, width of these and they are exactly 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 48 inches so they need to line up uh, with these so when you pro seal them you know one will s stop here and the other one will start here uh, and the same with with this one uh, the final sheet is only two feet wide so uh, uh, that's why this doubler here is there and this one here because those are four feet wide each. Okay, today is Saturday, February 3rd, 2024. So uh, I've got these all uh, measured out exactly <coughs> according to the measurements in the drawings. And I also, I've also got a, uh, a straight edge uh, running along the bottom here uh, so that all of these line up so obviously my straight edge wasn't uh, quite long enough so I had to uh, to use a couple of them uh, that square piece is, is uh, part of the, the uh, metal 
uh, that came in the kit that I haven't used yet. Actually, all of it is. So uh, um, uh, I got to the point of getting this all aligned and leveled and square and everything, which is really tedious, but uh, they're all nice and perfectly straight now uh, and measured to the right uh, measurements. And they're not equal either. Uh, a lot of them are, but uh, uh, you know, the ends and a, a couple in the middle around where, you know, these are, uh, are different spacing. Not a lot. It's only a matter of, you know, half an inch or, uh, or so, but uh, uh, there are, uh, the spacing isn't exactly the same. Uh, but uh, uh, my issue right now, and the reason I'm recording in the middle of the day instead of at night when I usually finish stuff is because uh, while I do have the uh, pro seal over there uh, I don't have uh, an applicator for it it looks like they're gonna be available locally so hopefully I can just run and go get that and uh, come back later today okay it's uh, later tonight so I uh, uh, I got what I needed to apply this. Uh, it's mostly just, uh, I was going to use an applicator, but uh, popsicle sticks actually uh, worked pretty well. So uh, I'm going to just do that uh, for the other one as well. Uh, so this stuff is pretty gooey. It's very thick. It's not, uh, it's not runny at all. Uh, so, uh, uh, applying it is usually, uh, I, I found, uh, you end up just probably using a little too much because it's so thick uh, and, and trying to, to run it around everything. So uh, uh, it, it was basically just taking a, uh, a large uh, popsicle stick and uh, running it uh, around the edge. I did wiggle them a little bit into the... Uh, uh, the glue so there would be glue underneath as well but it's mostly uh, obviously on the uh, outside where you see the majority of it so uh, that can is that's not the popsicle stick I use that <laughs> that was just a stir stick so uh, that can just that can just barely uh, had enough actually that's not true there there is a little bit left in the 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 can but uh, one can is enough to do the whole thing and rather than using the two different types of uh, pro seal uh, I just use because you know once the can is mixed then it's you know use it or lose it so uh, uh, I just did the entire all of the ribs with the uh, PS 890 the uh, the stuff that you use for the uh, uh, the the fuel bay areas, which are that one, that one, and that one. So uh, it's just a, uh, uh, it was just a matter of putting it on. It's it's very, very tedious. It's very thick, and you got to run it around the underside and then the overside. And, you know, it's very tedious. <laughs> uh, it would be good if I actually had a stand that was maybe, you know, two or three feet taller, so it would be a little bit easier to uh, uh, to get underneath there. But if you persevere, you will get it all done. Uh, I was going to get an applicator, but putting it on with a, a popsicle stick seems to be pretty easy. <laughs> uh, I guess I was overthinking it. Uh, uh, getting the, the stuff underneath is, is a bit of a challenge, but uh, uh, just wiggling it back and forth and uh, keeping track of uh, where it's supposed to be, that, that, that also makes it tedious. But uh, in the end, I'm happy. Uh, these are perfectly straight. So you can see uh, by that that it is absolutely, positively, perfectly straight uh, uh, because they're all resting up against that uh, that straight edge that I made. So everything everything is good. Uh, I'm gonna give this uh, uh, at least four days to dry, maybe more, uh, before I do anything more with it. So uh, it's back to there uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, cleaning up a lot of the mess that I made uh, these here needed a uh, second coat of the black uh, so those are probably dry already but uh, 
Uh, I'm not going to do any, anything with them until uh, tomorrow. So, so I'll be putting those on there. Although, you know, there's not a real whole lot I can do with them. Uh, but uh, they'll be there. And uh, I'm going to clean up this mess. And um, possibly uh, uh, get to uh, fixing that little uh, paint boo-boo there where I painted the inside of the, uh, the uh, rudder. So uh, I also received the uh, uh, the uh, counterweights for the uh, the leading edge extensions and I mistakenly used and I'm glad I, I mounted them the way that I did because they're easy to remove uh, so um, I'll, I'll uh, take those out and you can tell by the way that these are drilled that they're made for that so uh, that'll work out well and they're they're significantly heavier uh, and I was kind of wondering like the the because uh, that uh, I, I had received uh, a couple of uh, bullnose weights, and I thought, okay, because uh, we had discussed uh, that uh, I needed those weights, and I thought that's what those were, because there was no note or anything what they were for, and I just assumed they were for that. So uh, they're not. <laughs> uh, so the uh, uh, the small bullnose ones I have in there uh, are pretty easy to uh, to remove they're not riveted or bolted on or anything so uh, I will take those out uh, and remove all of the uh, the foam that's kind of holding them in place and uh, replace them with these and these probably will be uh, uh, either riveted or bolted on uh, unfortunately there's very little instructions in the uh, uh, in the uh, drawings for uh, how these go on so uh, you know they're triangular, and you, you know they're they're already pre-drilled. So, uh, and these are really heavy. So uh, it really it's going to make a huge difference on uh, being able to uh, to control that because it does take quite a bit of force on the uh, on the on the stick to to move that up and down. Uh, hopefully, when I get those weights on there, uh, uh, that won't be the case. But before I can even test it, uh, I need to start uh, skinning this. Uh, and I'm hoping to start getting working on that while I'm uh, uh, while I'm waiting for uh, all of that to dry. So this week is supposed to be on, uh, fairly uh, fairly mild, like in the in the 50s. So, uh, but still, I mean that, that that's pretty cold for this to be curing. So you know it's going to take a long, long time for that to uh, uh, to completely uh, completely cure. So uh, it's just going to sit there until. Uh, I'm ready to do something with it, which is probably going to be next week. Uh, since it's going to be a week before uh, I do anything significant, I think I'm going to just go ahead and publish this shorter video, uh, pick it up with uh, actually uh, uh, starting to do the, the skinning of the wings and stuff, because uh, uh, I'm basically doing kind of uh, uh, tedious stuff, waiting waiting for that to dry. So uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, publish this and uh, that'll prevent these videos from getting, you know, these monster epic movie length uh, 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 videos of putting everything together. So uh, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.